UTPA men's basketball hosting Duquesne for the first time. We'll see how they did. UTPA women's basketball made the trip to number 13 Oklahoma State. We'll check in on them. And we count down the top five stories of 2013. This is Bronc Country. Happy New Year and welcome to Bronc Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Pan American men's and women's basketball teams played their final non-conference tune-ups before the start of WAC play, with the men hosting Duquesne for the first time and the women visiting 11th ranked and undefeated Oklahoma State. We start with the men playing their first home game in three weeks and Jack Hines and Javon Farrell had themselves a ball game. We start with Hines who hits this early layup and then gets hot from behind the arc, not once, but twice. It's his first multi-three-pointer game. Three minutes later, Bronx down two, not anymore. Hines had 10 of the Bronx first 15 points, ties the game at 15. Now, Hines finished the first half with 12 points, but just wait until you see what he did for an encore. Starts off the second half with a jumper, and a layup, and then he buries his career-high third triple of the game. He's up to 19 points, and that's a new career high. But it didn't end there. It's the jumper here. Now, the Bronx went on a 7-0 run to get within nine late. After a Farrell layup, Hines hits a layup of his own, comes up with a block, and then assists on a Farrell three to bring the Bronx within 74-65. With one minute left, Hines still going full speed, grabs the steal and converts the layup. Hines finished with a career high 27 points, but the Bronx fall 88. 69. Hines had the highest scoring output by a Bronx this season. He went 12 for 22 from the field, the most baskets hit by a WAC player this season. Big game for Farrell too, as he scored 20 points on 8 of 18 shooting, tied his career high with three three-pointers, dished out a season high tying six assists, blocked a career high three shots, and tied his career high with four steals. Well, he was aggressive to the rim. He, he cut to the ball hard. He, he made shots when he had shots, uh, knocked a couple threes in, took a couple mid-range, uh, probably took a couple questionable shots in that, but he had a good rhythm going and, and, and really had a nice night. So, you know, we need that out of him. Uh, we need a little more offensive rebounding out of him, but, uh, you know, he, he, he did a very fine job for us. Here's a look at the WAC standings entering the start of conference play. New Mexico State and Seattle leading the way. The Bronx open whack play against Grand Canyon on Thursday at 8 p.m. in Phoenix before playing their final non-conference tilt at Texas A&M on Saturday at 3. Well, they're very talented. They have three high major you know, uh, transfers, a uh, kid from Texas A&M and a kid from New Mexico. And I mean, they're, they're just a very, very talented team. They, they've put a lot into the program. Marley does a nice job with them. And, and uh, of course, it'll be an exciting night. Uh, their first WAC home game. They've been drawing really good crowds. So, uh, and it's Fiesta Bowl week out there. So it, it'll be an exciting environment for us. On the women's side, the Bronx fell at number 11, Oklahoma State, 90 to 48. The Bronx kept the game within single figures for the first nine and a half minutes, and then closed the first half on an 8-0 run to pull within 12 before the Cowgirls erupted in the second half. Shante Goff led the Bronx in scoring for the fourth time this season, scoring her 11 points on four or five shooting, including three of three from behind the arc. She also led the Bronx in rebounding for the first time this season. Well, I tell you, the results of the Oklahoma State game are certainly not what I want. You know, they ranked number 11 in the nation, and they, they beat us soundly uh, the first half. We were pretty competitive, went in at half, only 12 down, and then the second half they came back and just, and just literally just, manhandled us. I mean, they did a good job on the boards, put back. They got, they got to the point where they were comfortable in all the shooting, and that's why they're ranked like number 11 in the nation. Uh, the positive we did get out of that is that Shantae Goff had an outstanding game, uh, showed that she could play at any level. And then uh, Teandra Nolan, our point guard, was pretty flawless at the point uh, for a lot of minutes and only had one or two turnovers. And I think she's uh, added a lot to that is she does get the ball in the hands of the ones we want to get it in. The only thing that continues to haunt and continues to linger with us is our shooting. And if our shooting doesn't Im improve, you know, it's going to be a long whack season. But uh, we're hopefully, we had a great workout today and hopefully we'll take care of that. 
eight of the last nine games have been on the road, so we're back in the friendly confines of uh, the field house where we're three and one, and uh, we want to get the WAC started in a great way, and hopefully we can find a way to uh, beat a very good uh, Grand Canyon State team who comes into the field house at 11 and two. Here's a look at the WAC standings on the eve of conference play. Grand Canyon, Idaho, and UTPA at the top of the conference, which will make Thursday's matchup between the Bronx and Grand Canyon all the more intriguing. First WAC basketball game in school history at 7 p.m. at the UTPA Fieldhouse. In honor of it being the Bronx first WAC contest, all tickets are $1. It's a game you don't want to miss. Grand Canyon can get up and down the floor, transition is extremely well, shoot the ball well, attack the rim, shoot free throws well. They're going to run a very good aggressive man-to-man -man defense, but we'll mix in a 2-3 zone. But they're a senior-laden team, they're experienced, they went to the Division II uh, Elite Eight, I believe, last year, and have all of those returners. Uh, Trent Mazur, coach, good friend, excellent coach, and uh, they've got a very good team. Now, if you want to guarantee your seats to see Bronx men's and women's basketball facing off against WAC competition, you still have time to get yourself some WAC packs. You can get reserved tickets to all Bronx WAC men's basketball home games for just $75. Women's WAC packs go for $25. Want one? Get out your phone and give the Bronx a call at 956-665-2221. And while you're on the phone, make sure you inquire about WAC tournament ticket packages and travel plans. You can get a ticket to all 14 WAC tournament men's and women's basketball games for just $165. The WAC tournament is taking place in Vegas this year, over spring break no less. We even have an in on hotel rooms through corporate travel. So give us a call or visit utpabronx.com today. Hey, we've been telling you Bronx Country just got a whole lot bigger, haven't we? Well, Viva Las Vegas! As we ring in 2014, it's time to say goodbye to 2013. Next on Bronx Country, we start counting down the top five stories of 2013. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. In the few months since we started bringing you Bronc Country every week, we've had the opportunity to highlight some of the great things our student athletes and coaches are doing both in competition and in the community. Now it's time to count down the top five stories of the fall of 2013. When looking at the Bronx volleyball roster, you may notice the three players from Hawaii or a majority of the players being from right here in Texas. But one thing you'll definitely notice is the Bronx one international player, Maria Klefoth. How did this highly recruited prospect from Berlin, Germany end up right here in the Valley? After my senior year, or actually before my senior year, I got a lot of um, emails from coaches from diff actually all over the country. and. Um, I actually chose this school because of the weather, first of all. Germany's obviously really cold, so I really like the palm trees and the pool. It's like vacation to me every day. And then on YouTube, I actually saw something called Bronx Got Talent, which <laughs> apparently the volleyball team did that every year. So it was fun to see the team have a good chemistry back then and like have a lot of fun together. So I like that. Well, today Maria feels quite at home here at UTPA. She does admit that things weren't always so easy for her here in South Texas. The biggest challenge, I mean, I missed my family, obviously. And um, at first, the language barrier, a couple of injuries. <laughs> that was hard. So um, right now, everything is awesome. <laughs> With all the struggles Maria's had to face in her college career, 
Coach Yale believes it has made her one of the hardest working members of the Bronx team and has also made her somebody that the rest of the team can look up to for inspiration. She's given it all every day, uh, you know, and to go work through some of the, the injuries and personal situations that she's had throughout her career, uh, you know, starting off with the, the ankle injury and all that that, you know, she had to rehab from. You know, she's just a, she's a good mentor. She's a good icon for the kids to live up to. Uh, you know, she does the same in the classroom. She works her, her tail off and, you know, it, it shows uh, with her grades and everything else. And, uh, you know, she's just one of those kids that, you know, is, is hard to replace. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. Step one, register. Step two, cover up that Longhorn shirt with a Bronx shirt. Step three, Right over the front of the room, a little arch. That's it. Bronx men's basketball head coach Dan Hipsher, assistant coach Cody Hopkins, and seven of their players teamed up with Bronx women's basketball head coach Larry Tidwell, assistant coach Hannah Burleson, and 11 players to give free one on one instruction to a group of boys and girls ages 5 to 13 at Academy Sports and Outdoors in Edinburgh. Getting the kids out, getting them around some of the kids in the community, kids that want to be involved around basketball. You know, it gets us out, lets people see we're trying to do things in the community and, and at least affects kids who want to be around basketball and gives them a chance to be around basketball. Oh, coming out and being a part of the community, that's something that, that we do. That's what women's basketball does. This is appearance number 49 in the Valley for us since we've been here in April and we're going to continue to do this to try to build a, a following from not only the winter Texans but build a following from within the Rio Grande Valley. The clinic was made up primarily of layup, ball handling, and passing drills, the type of things both coaches think the kids need to learn early. Just trying to do very fundamental things because, you know, the kids are young. Things that are fundamentals sometimes that people overlook, it's more about fundamentals and it's more about building your, getting better step by step, and we tried to do that today. With As for the kids, they had a great time. Really fun? Go Bronx. Oh, I thought this was fantastic when I saw it in the newspaper. Um, so I made plans for my kids uh, to come out and, and enjoy this as basketball season starting up. My youngest one hasn't had any basketball coaching or experience whatsoever. So I thought this would be a good you know, way to kick off the basketball season for them. It was very good, very productive it seemed like. Uh, the kids really enjoyed it. So uh, the coaches were wonderful and great. The players, they're awesome. Well, the kids very happy that they had the opportunity to learn from the Bronx. The Bronx players, well, they wish that they had had the opportunity to do that when they were little. I really never had the opportunity for players to come back and reach out to me, so now that I got the chance, I want to take full advantage of it and reach out to the kids. When I was this age, I didn't have this chance to be able to work with older college players and stuff, so it was, it was fun able to give, give back to them. You know? I just didn't really hit me until we hit the plane and we are trying to land in Boston. UTPA junior golfer Chris Felix needed some time to digest the feeling and the news and maybe it didn't really sink in until he hit the links, but he had earned a trip to the U.S. Amateur Championship by shooting a two-round total of 137 at the qualifying event in Litchfield Park, Arizona. That included a one under 71 in the first round and a career best tying 66 in the second round. I birdied holes 14, 15, and 16 and my caddy and I were talking and like, Okay, you can see how this goes in 17. Uh, after I hit my approach shot into the green, I told my caddy to feel my heart and it was just racing. And it was just, it was a good time. One of the first things Felix did was call his coach at UTPA, Josh Fostick. I was out recruiting actually when he sent me the text that, uh, that he played really well in that last round. Uh, I kind of found uh, a space where I could call him real quick and, and kind of was on the phone and texting back and forth while he was waiting for those last couple groups to come in. And, um, I, I mean, I can't, I can't express how excited I was. Uh, for, I knew that, that we really hadn't had anything like that happen at UTPA, and for him to have the summer that he was already having and have it kind of culminate in that, it was really exciting. The list of players who have donned the Bronx green and white includes a few professionals, including UTPA Hall of Famer Mike Brisky, who played seven years on the PGA Tour and three on the Nationwide Tour. So when Felix realized he was the first Bronx to compete in the U.S. Amateur Championship, he focused on representing UTPA, wearing Bronx gear and colors as much as possible. I was really proud when I found out that I was the first one to actually go there. I mean, only one person say they can do that. So I, li I, I liked it and I 
think I represented us pretty well. Well, it's great advertising, I can tell you that. Um, I think it, it, it adds a little bit of legitimacy to, to our program. Um, I've been using it all summer because, uh, you know, a lot of kids just don't know where we're at. And, and to be able to say, hey, you know, we were able to produce a kid that could play and compete in the U.S. Amateur um, down here. Uh, not many, like I said, not many people know where this is, but we have great weather, great golf courses, and um, it surprises me that, that he was the first. We, um, we have the ability down here, I think, to kind of produce those kinds of players every single year. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the future. I think we're going to get more players like him. While playing one round at the Charles River Country Club and one round at the historic Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, Felix finished tied for 302nd out of 312 competitors. Despite that, Coach Fosdick knows that this is the type of experience that can help Felix's confidence. I said regardless of how you do, you just take away the fact that over 7,000 people tried to get in this and you're one of the top 300. So if anything, it should tell them that, that a lot of the hard work, a lot of the, the things that we did at practice all year long, um, a lot of things that, uh, you know, that we talked about throughout the year, I think he finally started to get to see some of that, uh, the results of that, the fruit of that. And so hopefully going forward, he knows that you know, the hard work and dedication keep up that model and, and there's no reason why that has to be the last one he goes to. Well, after all of that, nothing guaranteed for Felix. He is right back here at Los Lagos with his teammates trying to qualify for the next tournament. Our first day of qualifying is today for Chicago State, so hopefully I can start off strong. I told him that. I said, I hope you do well in qualifying because it would be really weird to go to the first tournament without a kid that went to the U.S. Amateur. I think by making the U.S. Amateur, he actually probably made the other guys practice a little bit harder because they want to come beat a U.S. Amateur participant. So. Um, it's wide open. Uh, he needs to come out and prove himself just like he would uh, any other time, and, and I'm looking for him to do that. You've now seen stories five through three. When Bron Country returns, we look at the top two stories of 2013. Now the segment you've all been waiting for. We look back at the top two stories of the fall of 2013. For most Americans, Thanksgiving is about family, feasting, and football. UTPA students get to enjoy a long weekend with those they love most. But ever wonder how student athletes that don't have the privilege to go home spend their Thanksgiving? This year, men's tennis coach Brandon Stokes hosted a Thanksgiving feast and welcomed student athletes. We all talk about having a family, and then it's, um, do we, uh, but it's, how do we deliver it, right? Um, so just talk about it. So this is one way that uh, my wife and I were talking about that uh, that we wanted to, to really open up our home and, and really make him feel like a family. Athletes enjoyed an amazing Thanksgiving feast, a ping pong tournament, and most importantly, each other's company. It's not something I celebrate really, but being here with people I know and I've been known for a while now, uh, we do everything together, it's been kind of like an, uh, I guess in a family environment, it feels it feels good. It feels fine. It's good to be I mean, good to be here. Although most of these athletes are international, Thanksgiving is an American holiday that's become meaningful to them. Uh, well, I'm really thankful for the coach to invite us, for being here, being on the team, and to be, having the opportunity and the chance to study in the U.S. while I'm from France. So I'm really thankful for that. I'm thankful for having a Thanksgiving dinner all together with my friends, my boyfriend, and I guess it's my family here. So. Yeah. To be here, I mean, with, with good food and, and something to do. Um, to just enjoy Thanksgiving, like the holiday of it. And um, I'm just really happy and blessed. And I know that part of my responsibility is to be a father figure, um, to be a leader, to be a mentor um, for these student athletes. And so, only one way to, another way to do that, to express it, is again, open up the home, spend time with them, not just on court or in the weight room or on the track or anything like that, but it's actually just spend time with them uh, in a non athletic environment, a non academic environment, and just have a hopefully connect. Uh, on a human level because that's what's going to be that's what's meaningful that's going to be the most significant um, the most impactful moments for them really is going to be these types these parts these moments of our relationship these UTPA student athletes may not have been able to go home this past weekend but thanks to coach Stokes these athletes got to celebrate Thanksgiving not only as a team but as a family for Bronx Country I am Alicia Diaz Johnny All I have to do is walk into a therapy and see a kid working out and doing, you know, bettering themselves. 
and see what they're going through. And that makes me, you know, so much grateful for what I have. As a parent, you know, of a child who plays sports in Little League sports here in the Valley, um, seeing our kids that come into therapy on a daily basis and some of those kids their only outing from the house is to therapy and back home and I felt that you know if I had the opportunity to take my kid to a baseball game on a summertime on a daily basis I wanted to offer the same opportunity to the parents of those kids who come only to therapy um, so we just uh, an idea was brought up you know months ago and we started pitching it to the community and everybody responded I, you get emotional, uh, the courage of these kids and, and their parents, the perseverance, the hope, the faith. Um, a couple of them, uh, they were running the bases, brought tears to my eyes. So it was just an unbelievable event, um, and hopefully we'll make it bigger and better next year. Uh, I can tell you what, I don't know about the player, but I definitely know it makes them better people. And at the end of the day, um, they're going to be husbands and they're going to be fathers. Um, and the best husband, the better husbands, the better fathers they can be, uh, this world's going to be a better place. But it definitely makes them better people. After a long night of hard work along with some fun, the Bronx baseball team comes out of this experience not only stronger as individuals, but stronger as a team. If you want to show your support for these Bronx student athletes and coaches, donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund is by participating in our eighth annual bait fishing tournament, affectionately known as BAIT, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You can be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes, including a $4,000 grand prize. There's also a raffle to win a $35,000 boat. Interest peaked? Visit utpabronx.com slash bait for more information. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Both basketball teams opened their first season in the WAC on Thursday, with the men visiting Grand Canyon and the women hosting Grand Canyon as well. That women's game is the Bronx WAC home opener and all tickets are just $1. The women get Saturday off, but the men travel to Texas A&M for their final non-conference affair. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country, not just this week, but this year. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... The Bronx! <laughs> is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. 
Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. <laughs> 